Hey everybody, welcome to our final episode of Community Voices Hispanic Heritage Month. Today we're joined by Diana Ordonez, forward for the Houston Dash. Thank you so much for joining us, Diana. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. Yes, we're so happy to have you. Um, so I just wanted to start. First off, you were selected to represent Mexico at the 2023 Pan American Games in Chile, where the Mexican squad went undefeated to win the gold medal for the first time in their history at the Pan American Games. What did it mean to you to be able to bring that gold home for Mexico after only being on the senior team for a year? Yeah, I think that first year on the Mexican national team was really tough. Um, didn't qualify for a World Cup, didn't qualify for the Olympics. Um, so for that to be kind of my first exposure to switching federations and being on that team, um, that year was really difficult. So to be able to go to um, what I would consider technically a major tournament um, and be in a gold medal match and go undefeated and, um, you know, just kind of have that feeling of winning again and that feeling of, um, progress as a team was just really important. So I think like the biggest thing for us was just kind of putting our name back out there, showing how much we had improved within that year after having gone through, you know, obviously not qualifying. Um, so yeah, it was really important for us to go out there and get a good result. And so to be able to do that and bring that back home, especially for the first time was really special. No, for sure. That's amazing. And also earlier this year, you participated in the MLS All-Star Week where you were involved in the skills challenge. What did that kind of mean to you to become the first or well, the NWSL player to break that barrier, essentially, pretty much? Yeah, the skills challenge was amazing. It was so fun and it was just so cool to get to play next to players I've literally been watching my entire life. Like it was unbelievable I still kind of like pinch myself just thinking about the fact that I got to share a field with them was so cool um but I think to be the first NWSL player in general was such an honor and I'm really grateful that they you know picked me and trusted me to to be there and represent the NWSL but also as a Mexican-American woman I think um it was the perfect way to break the ice for you know women having a place um kind of in the MLS as you know we're kind of I would consider it like a brother and sister kind of um, league here in the U.S. So it was really cool to, to be able to be a part of that. I'm really happy that they decided to do that and to include women in that. I think that's really cool. Um, and I hope we continue to get to do that. And a lot of other people kind of get to go and have that experience because it was so amazing. But yeah, truly just an honor and such a blessing that just kind of fell into my lap. And I was just really excited to be able to go and hopefully represent well. Amazing. No, that's amazing. Um, and you also currently hold the NWSL record for goals scored in a rookie season. So for you, what was kind of like the thought process to accomplish that or, you know, get your mind into that? Obviously, that's not an easy thing to do as a rookie. So for you to hold that, how does that feel? Yeah, again, just such an honor, uh, such a blessing. I had no idea what my rookie year was going to have in store. So I think, um, just a, a blessing. I think God really just put me on the perfect team um, to be able to have the teammates that I had that just set me up. They made scoring so easy. I mean, they put everything on a platter for me. So I have so much respect and credit to my teammates for the year that I had um, and the coaches as well, the courage, they helped me so much in my development and they took a chance on me and they trusted me. And um, I knew that once I got that opportunity, I wasn't going to take it for granted and I had to just kind of run with it. But um as we'll probably talk about a little bit more, I attribute so much of my success to just being faithful and, and having that faith background and just staying firm in that. And I think um, that was a huge role in, in kind of moving into the pros in general and just kind of being on my own for the first time, um, not really knowing anybody on my team, minus, you know, a few people that I've crossed paths with before. But um, yeah, the whole situation was just such a blessing and, and my teammates were incredible. I can't give them enough credit. But yeah, I mean, it was it was so cool. It was the most a uh, fulfilling year I think I've had in, in such a long time to just be able to um, break that record and kind of still hold that. It's something I'm really proud of and, and I'm really, I cherish it a lot. 100%. And you're obviously making waves. So what's something that you look forward to probably for the next season coming up? Yeah, uh, obviously, you know, we've had a rough go this season. It's just been pretty difficult um, on a lot of spectrums for our team. But I think Next year, I'm really looking forward to the fact that we've signed a lot of uh, re-signed a lot of good players and that people are going to keep coming back and um, hopefully build something here. I think that's what my main commitment here to Houston is, is to try and um, build this team up to the place that it deserves to be. I think it's a great market. I think of people, you know, a lot of people might not look at Houston and see like 
a fun place to live or all these different things, but yeah. um, I love it here. It's amazing. So I just want to help make this team um, a place that people want to come and people want to experience and they want to contribute to. And I think uh, if, you know, we keep getting the right people and we have the right attitude, we can, we can bring Houston to where I think it deserves to be. So I think I'm, I'm excited for growth uh, and the potential that this team has to to be really great. No, super, super dope. That's honestly great. And clearly, you know, we have you here because it is Hispanic Heritage Month. So it's only right to ask you, what does Hispanic Heritage Month truly mean to you? Yeah, I think Hispanic Heritage Month is so fun. I think it's amazing that the league kind of celebrates it and gives it the attention that I think it deserves. Um, as we do with all the, you know, the months that represent different heritages. I think it's really cool that we make um, a big deal about it because it is a big deal to kind of celebrate those differences. And um, for me, I think I see it kind of from an interesting perspective because I obviously am American born. Um, so to kind of be from here, but have my whole upbringing and background be Hispanic, I feel like is a kind of different perspective on it as opposed to kind of my Mexican national team teammates who grew up and live and play in Mexico. Um, so for me, I just, I want to be able to represent my culture well and, and to let people know that you don't have to be one or the other, that you can very much be both or three or four or however many things and places you represent. I think that's what makes the league so unique. It's it's so diverse and we just keep getting more and more international players. So I think that's really cool. But um, Hispanic Heritage Month is just cool to be able to reflect on kind of where you come from and and the things that you represent. And so, yeah, it's a lot of fun and I'm glad that it's celebrated the way that it is. No, a hundred percent. And for you, did you ever feel like you had maybe some um, difficulties like adjusting to maybe the culture from some of your other teammates for the, your international team? Or do you think that it was like pretty easy for you just because, you know, having the background and having your family kind of be from there, it was easy to adapt? Yeah, I think mostly it was a little bit easier just because, uh, I do speak Spanish, which is a plus. There's a lot of, you know, Mexican Americans that don't speak Spanish and it's unfortunate. And if you're on the Mexican national team, like there are a lot of girls that don't speak any English. I think now like we're getting a lot more American people or people who do speak English, which is really cool, but um, that's their culture and that's the language. And so it really helps to be able to speak Spanish. So I think at least having that um, made it easier for me to kind of connect with people. Um but yeah, I would say the girls were super welcoming and it was really amazing to to go from one federation to another and have this whole completely different experience, which was just so amazing. And I felt like I kind of got back into touch with all the things that I had growing up, which was really cool because, you know, I went to college Well, I grew up in Dallas, went to college in Virginia, and then I was in North Carolina. Now I'm in Houston where there's more Hispanic people, but um, I feel like for like four or five years of my life, and then obviously growing up in Dallas, which is not, well, in Prosper, which is a little bit north of Dallas, but where I grew up, there wasn't as many Hispanic people. So um, to pretty much once a month or once every few months, be able to go back and actually be in Mexico or be around people who only speak Spanish or people that just share my culture and understand kind of the things that I grew up with is a lot of fun after having been out of touch with it, I felt like for a while. Oh, yeah, 100 percent. And honestly, touching on that, like for you speaking, you play for a city that, you know, is I don't want to say predominantly, but does have a pretty big Hispanic population. Um, What or how do you kind of plan to continue fighting for and supporting the Hispanic community? Um, Have you gotten any insights maybe from some of your teammates or how you can obviously use your platform to amplify that? Yeah, I think that was one of the big reasons I wanted to come here um, for me. Soccer is amazing and it's um, an incredible experience and I, I love it so much. But I think on a broader spectrum, it's it's something that opens doors and allows people opportunity to to engage and create um, you know new opportunities and experiences. And so for me, it was really important that my off the field experience was also something that I was um, taking care of and that I was doing things that are meaningful to me off the field as well as you know not just playing soccer. Um, and so to be able to be in this market and engage with the community and see little girls in the stands that are growing up similar to the way that I grew up or they're talking to me in Spanish and I'm able to interact with them in Spanish. Like, I think that's so important. That's something that I didn't have when I was growing up. So it's really important for me to be able to connect with the community. And, and this team does a really good job with different outreaches and um, just kind of bringing light to the fact that we have a Mexican player on our team. Um, and 
you know, we want people to, we want more people to always come to the games. And so I think if they see how much of them or how many of them are represented on the field and they actually knew about those players and their stories, then it would be more, you know, enticing for them to come to the games and to be able to have those interactions. So that was definitely important to me when coming here. Yes. And you really touched on, honestly, one of my next questions was um, obviously seeing the impact that that holds, you know, kind of seeing the fans that traditionally probably, you know, if they were to go up to their player and they would speak Spanish, they probably wouldn't get, you know, a Spanish response back. How does that feel for you now? Like, you know, being a Hispanic player during Hispanic Heritage Month, especially since, you know, the month it falls during the season. um, What is that like kind of entail for you and and does your family talk about it like do they ever bring it up or you know do they kind of you know in the Hispanic culture sometimes it's harder for them to see things for like what it really is or to you you just there's just it's just you but you really are you know like a star and you you have this platform so do they kind of kind of speak on that and you know tell you like oh my gosh like you're Mm -hmm. you're truly making a difference or you know you're you're doing this um and becoming a version for somebody else that you know other people didn't have when they were growing up right yeah I think my parents um they probably most enjoy my interactions that happen with Mexican fans and that I'm able to speak Spanish. And I also think that's something that they're proud of just because they made sure that we all knew Spanish growing up. So the fact that I'm continuing to use it, I'm sure is very uh, pleasing to them. So yeah, I mean, they come to a lot of the home games. Thankfully they live, you know, only four hours away. So they get to come out here a lot and just the culture around our stadium I think you just can feel it that you know that there's like a Hispanic presence there and I think that's super important and representative of the city that we're in um so for them to kind of get to to see that and experience that I think moving to the Mexican national team and having you know representing that side I think brought a lot more of my family inside to my career which I think was not something I anticipated or really thought of beforehand but I think so many more of my Hispanic and Mexican family members are just feel so much more tied into what I'm doing because I'm representing a side of them that's so important to them and that's so integral to who they are that they kind of get to see inside of it a little bit more and it just hits a little bit closer to home um, than if you know I was just playing for the U.S. or playing in an American league and and that kind of thing so for them to kind of see those interactions um, I think it hopefully it makes them proud to to be able to see that I'm not just representing, you know, not my American side, but also my Hispanic Mexican side. Of course. No, that was beautifully said. And I'm sure that they are very proud of you. Um, so love that. Um, but we are excited to announce that we will be donating $10,000 to 821 um, on your behalf. So can you kind of tell us a little bit about this organization and possibly just why it means so much to you? Yeah, first of all, I'm incredibly grateful. I think it's such an amazing thing that um, we get to do that and partner in that together. So super grateful for that opportunity. But um, A21 was something I learned about, I think when I was in high school, I think my mom had kind of told me a little bit about it. Um, But it's an organization that's run by Christine Kane. Uh, She is an evangelist, Christian speaker, author, all these incredible things. Um, And basically the point of the organization is to not only abolish, but also bring attention to human trafficking um, and modern slavery. And because those things are very real and obviously extremely dangerous and harmful. um, And the way that she goes about it from a a perspective of being a Christian is something that I admire because that's such an integral part to my life. Yeah. Um, And obviously it's a really good cause. Um, Living in Houston has definitely brought this to my attention a little bit more. Uh, This is a very big city. Um, It's very close to Mexico um, and, you know, different borders and things. And so that's, you know, unfortunately a hub for people to to partake in, in, you know, human trafficking and all these different kinds of horrible things. So um, for me, it kind of hit home when I moved here and it became very apparent that I had to be much more aware and careful about my surroundings and you know, what time I'm out and where I'm walking and all these different kinds of things that um, I wish no woman or person had to deal with, but it's very real. Um, and so the work that she's doing to uh, bring attention to to this situation and, and the walks and the um, fundraisers that she has going on to to hopefully end it one day and, and the message that she puts behind it is just something that 
um, I felt really drawn to and I've, I've admired her work for so long. And so for her to also kind of be putting this together and bringing attention to it as a woman who lives in a big city, lives alone, that kind of thing, um, just really important to me. No, that's amazing. You honestly, I didn't even know too much about it either. So the mm -hmm. fact that you speak so passionately, honestly speaks a lot of volumes. Um, for you, like what was something, or at least obviously, you know, you saw it in your surrounding just kind of being in Houston, but um, maybe how can viewers kind of get connected with this organization? Like some things that they're able to do to get a little bit more involved. I definitely think that you're bringing awareness to this. Yeah, so she actually puts on these uh, marches or walks in a lot of major cities, um, which is something you can look up on their website. Um, I believe it's just a21.org, but um, there are these kind of like marches where people can get together. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they're silent. So everyone kind of just like gathers together and does like this walk and they carry signs and all these things and they have opportunities for um, you know, like booths and stuff where you can learn more information and the statistics that are actually unbelievable um, that you wouldn't even think is happening in your city that is. Um, and so to get connected to those walks is a really powerful thing. You can meet people with, um, you know, incredible stories and that kind of feel passionate about it as well. So I think that's the biggest thing that gets put on, which I believe um, they're actually having one in Houston very soon, I think in the next few weeks. Um, so yeah, to be able to kind of just plug in and, and get connected and learn more about, um, you know, what the organization does to, to bring awareness and that kind of thing. I think the walks are probably um, the major and kind of easiest way to kind of get connected. For sure. No, thank you so much. Honestly, that was so great. We're so glad that you definitely brought this um, organization to us, to awareness, to be able to kind of, you know, give back to them. Um, we love that you just speak so passionately about it. Um, honestly, you are truly so well-spoken that I enjoyed every minute of this interview. Um, and I know, you know, going forward, you're just going to have a lot of success from one Mexican American to another. Um, we'll definitely support you all the way. And um, I know sooner or later, you'll probably have your own foundation. So i um, excited wow. for that. Yeah. <laughs> but thank you so much for joining us to help us wrap up um, Hispanic Heritage Month and good luck with everything that comes next. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm super honored that, you know, I got to chat with you and to be a part of this. So thank you so much for giving me the opportunity. Amazing. Thank you.